Okay, we're gonna try this one more time here this morning. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, we'll uh, uh, wait for you guys to get back on, uh, and uh, hopefully it doesn't throw you off too much here. Uh, we are live now. I don't know what happened with my camera. It kind of shut off and uh, feed kind of went dead, I guess. And so I would encourage you to jump back on if you can uh, and share that, share this feed. Uh, I'm not sure what happened with the other one, okay? Uh, anyway, today, good morning uh, once again to you all. Uh, today is Thursday, May the 4th. Uh, and as we've said to the kids, may the 4th be with you. All right, uh, they're on the other side of the camera and they said nothing. And so that's kind of what I've been working with. So pray for me, please. My kids are just, uh, they're just struggling, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and begin this morning. Hit that share button. I think we're good to go this time. The camera is still rolling. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you say the camera's still rolling anymore because it's all digital and everything now. But anyway, the camera is still rolling. I uh, hope you've had a great week so far. Uh, it's been a good week here, uh, and uh, we've en I've enjoyed our study here through 1 Corinthians. Hopefully you have as well. We're going to attempt to finish up 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, uh, so please hit that share button, comment throughout, like it, all that good stuff there, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, let's look at verse number 16. 1 Corinthians 3 and verse number 16, where the Bible says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, uh, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple, of God. Him shall God destroy for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Okay? Uh, and so, we think about, uh, thank you, coming in clear. Awesome. Uh, think about what uh, the Bible here says. We know that uh, later on in 1 Corinthians, the Bible says, know ye not what? Know ye not? Uh, in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19, what? Know ye not? Uh, that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, uh, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. And we see kind of a reference here once again. Know ye not that in First Corinthians chapter 3, know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you at salvation. At salvation. Uh, we are, the Holy Spirit indwells us, and we become that, our body becomes the temple. Uh, and it says, and that Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. And so what a great reminder of the seriousness of our relationship with the Lord, of the seriousness of the fact that our body is the temple, uh, and that the Holy Spirit indwells us. We need to take that uh, take that serious, uh, uh, seriously. And so what a great reminder there. And so we are to to maintain that temple, maintain that right relationship uh, with the Lord. Uh, verse number 18, let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seem to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Uh, speaking of, once again, that relationship with Jesus Christ and that humbling, the humbling aspect of salvation. Uh, and though we have all the knowledge that this world has to offer, we can be worldly wise. Uh, we need to humble ourselves. We need to become, as, uh, as the scripture says here, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Recognizing that true wisdom comes from the Lord. So we humble ourselves to salvation. Uh, we, we humble ourselves um, uh, in regards to our submission to the Holy Spirit. Uh, and allowing him to work in our life, that we humble ourselves by saying, uh, saying to the Lord, God, I want the, your will for my life. And so that is kind of where we need to be at in our relationship with Jesus Christ. And, uh, and is Jesus your everything? If he is, then we need to humble ourselves. Uh, humble ourselves in regards to salvation. If you haven't trusted him, trust him. Humble ourselves in regards to submission. Humble ourselves into into the fact that we want God's will for our life. And uh, man, we can uh, we can be worldly wise. But that's not that's not where wisdom comes from. That's not what true wisdom is. We need to humble ourselves and and ask for the Lord's wisdom. That true wisdom. All right, verse number nineteen. For the wisdom of this world, here it is. The wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Uh, and again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Uh, and so we note just these these couple of thoughts here in regards to uh, the, world's, the world's wisdom. It's foolishness to God. Think about... Um, 
in our world today the the difficulties and the battles in our world today okay think about what's going on we've traded creation uh, by an almighty god we've traded that for evolution the foolishness uh, we've traded the male and female created he them to you can identify as whatever you want to identify as uh, and people are identifying as as different genders all that kind of stuff they're identifying as animals even and and and, and so on and so it's important for us to uh, to remember that that the way of this world is foolishness i saw uh, there's uh, an elected member i believe of congress i i don't know if he's uh, state or federal uh, but he is a uh, he is a, a white man and he's identifying as a black lesbian woman or something like that uh, and that's just kind of, that's kind of the craziness in our world today i don't know if he's joking or not uh, but that's what he said, uh, and uh, and he's getting he's getting torn to pieces because he's being insensitive to people that identify as those things. God made it so simple. God's created us, male and female. God, God has created us unique, uh, each individual. God has created us with uh, different skin tones, different talents, different abilities, and the list goes on. That's the way God has created us. But when you take God out of the picture. You take purpose for living out of the picture. You take purpose for in life out of the picture. And so it's no wonder that we, uh, in our society today, people don't know what they are. They don't know uh, what bathroom to use. They don't know what gender. They, why? Because there is no God. There is no purpose to life. There's no purpose to living. And so you do you, do you instead of doing what God wants and, and seeking what God wants for your life. And so the world's wisdom as we look at it, it's foolishness. Uh, and, uh, and it's pretty, pretty sad to see some of the struggles that people are having because of their lack of faith and trust in the Lord. Uh, and it is rather sad. Uh, let's look at verse number um, 21, where it says, Therefore, let no man glory in vain, for all things are yours. Once again, we see this uh, without God, we are nothing. We need the Lord, uh, and He is our everything. Uh, and God knows uh, the number of heartbeats that our heart will have. God knows how many breaths that we will take. Uh, and uh, with without the Lord, we're we're nothing. Uh, and and we need the Lord to maintain that beating heart, the the lungs that continue to breathe, and so on. Uh, and they says, therefore, let no man glory in men. We ought to glory in the Lord. Uh, and uh, every aspect of our life, it's not the talent and ability that we have. It's what God has given to us and allowed us to do. Uh, and so we are to rejoice uh, in the Lord. Give all glory to the Lord. So, And then let's look at this. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Okay, what's being stated here, this is a, a statement to the church. All things are yours. Remember what the problem is here. The problem is the divisions, the contentions uh, in the church. And Paul now addresses these at the end of verse number three. For all things are yours. Okay, what does he mean by that? Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. Okay, what does he mean by that? All are yours. Um, we have all things common in Christ Jesus. It doesn't, it doesn't matter whether Paul led you to the Lord or Apollos led you to the Lord or Cephas led you to the Lord. It doesn't matter whether you're baptized by Paul or Peter or John. That doesn't matter. Uh, we, are, we have a commonality <coughs> in the Lord, uh, Jesus Christ, and we understand it's salvation by grace through faith, where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that is the commonality that we have. And so we can't get stuck on some of these things like the church at Corinth was coming out. Well, I was saved by him. I was saved by him. I was baptized by him, baptized by him. Uh, that part doesn't matter. It's that we're baptized in Jesus Christ. We're saved by Jesus Christ. That's what matters. He says, all are yours. Okay? Uh, these all belong to Jesus Christ. And then it says, and ye are Christ, and Christ is God's. And so even the Apostle Paul said, and, I, and I, we've noted this, that he said, follow me as I follow Christ. Uh, and really what this is a reminder of is we are not to be looking to 
to men. We are not to be looking to the things of this world, the world systems. Uh, we're not to look to those things. We're to look to Jesus Christ. Hebrews tells us he's the author and finisher of our faith. Uh, and because he's the author, because he's the finisher, that's who we look to. Uh, and yes, there are times, I believe, there are times when we can look to, to men as they follow Christ. Uh, we can look to maybe uh, institutions as they follow Christ. Uh, and, and at the heart of it, uh, at the motivation behind it, it all needs to be rooted in Jesus Christ. When we lose that focus, when people lose that focus, when institutions lose that focus, uh, uh, then they're going contrary to the Word of God. And here's the danger. Here's the danger of looking to men uh, and putting too much stock in men. Men are but men. Institutions are, are but comprised by men. Uh, and, and mankind is sinful and mankind can make mistakes. I'm not saying not to trust men or to, to follow them. Uh, just know this, that there will be times when men fail. Uh, and if we are looking completely to the man, we're going to be let down uh, and heartbroken. And so we need to look to, oftentimes we, as we look to those men, let's look past those men to Jesus Christ. Be thankful for the individuals that God has placed in your life that have remained faithful. Uh, and, and sometimes, yes, they've let us down, uh, but by and large, there are many that have remained faithful. We can be thankful for them, but ultimately we look to Jesus Christ and ye are Christ and Christ is God's. And so that's important for us to have that, have that right focus each and every day. Uh, it's such a, it's so encouraging to me and I don't want to toot my own horn, but it's so encouraging for, uh, for uh, people to say, you know, when they come up to me, they say, hey, that was a great message. Hey, thank you for the message. Hey, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for, for who you are. Uh, and you know what? That, that makes me feel good and all of that. And, and I try to deflect praise to the Lord because without God, I, I, I'm, I'm nothing. Uh, and I try to, try to keep that spirit of humility. And I'm not bragging on my humility here by any means. But, uh, but I, I, want you, I want you to know and, and me to never forget that it's not about, it's not about me. It's about the Lord. Uh, there may be times when I fail. There may be a time when God moves me on. I don't know. I, I believe that God's going to have me here the rest of my life. But there may be, God may, may have other plans. I don't know. Let's not look to, look to, to me. Uh, let's look to Jesus Christ uh, and, uh, and realize that, hey, I am just but a man. We're all just but men. Uh, so let's let's follow Christ. Let's look to Christ. Okay, uh, we're going to end with that today. All right, let's go ahead and welcome those who have commented live here this morning. And sorry about the hiccup for our first run through this, but thank you for jumping back on. Cliff and Karen, good morning to you. Brian and Cindy, good morning to you. Have an awesome day. Ingrid, good morning to you. Uh, love you and have a wonderful day there. Uh, and Paula, good morning to you. And uh, once again, may the fourth be with you. Uh, and I think the kids caught up. I think they view that as like dad joke status or something. I don't know. Gene, uh, good morning to you. Have an awesome day. Uh, Carol, Phil and Carol, good morning to you both. And thank you for being on. Lee and Angie, good morning to you. And David, thank you for being on this morning. All right, trust in our power. It's been a blessing. If you haven't shared it, be sure to do so. We'll touch base once again tomorrow at 830 and look forward to our next time together as we get into chapter number four. All right, have a great day, everybody.